name there. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Well, welcome to uh, Wednesday night Bible study. So uh, let's get right into God's word for tonight. Hope you guys brought your fork, your spoon, your knife, your bib, all of those good things. All right. Can't forget the plate. All right. <laughs> all right. So we're going to enjoy this uh, tasty meal before the Lord right now. Well, join me in a word of prayer as we get started. Father, we come before you tonight in the name of Jesus, and we bless you for this time of uh, assembling together. Thank you, Father, for uh, those that are here, those that are watching, Father, those that are on the way. We bless you, Father, for the increase that you bring into our lives by uh, the teaching and preaching of your word, Father, the truth that comes forth that causes us to be changed, especially as we apply it as diligent doers of your word and not forgetful hearers. Thank you, Father, for truth and revelation that will come forth, Father, information that will provide inspiration, Father, that will provoke us unto good works, Father, that we may live more and more uh, for you every day and in every area. We bless you tonight, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Well, take your seats. Take your seats. You know, it's the warriors that come out on Wednesday night. It's the warriors, you know. Not just any old Christian comes out on Wednesday night. It's the warriors, uh, the, the tried and true, you know. And so, uh, not to say you're not a warrior out there yourself, okay? But uh, you know what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we have um, been having a, a very, um, I would say, great time. Uh, in the Lord and before the Lord, as we have been honoring him during this feast time, the fall feast of the year. And um, the more you grow in God's word, um, the more you understand, obviously, but there are some things that you just cannot um, escape or get away from or overlook or, um, you know, hold in a certain regard that maybe you didn't esteem it as before. And so now, you know, as I mentioned in the uh, fall feast, as we have been growing in greater understanding and revelation about these things, um, it's become unescapable or inescapable. It's becoming something that um, is not just, I learned about it and I know that I should do it and I'm going through the motions of doing it, now it's becoming something that's a part of your, your heart and your spirit. And that's, that's a key thing right there. So, um, so we've been celebrating uh, beginning at Rosh Hashanah. We have uh, moved through the 10 days of awe on to Yom Kippur. And I mean, we have poured out ourselves into the Lord. Um, uh, at least I have, I don't know about you, but I have at least. And um, so, uh, it's been a really, really good time, okay? And I've been hearing testimonies from other people uh, that have shared some of their experiences that how God has delivered them in some areas through some of the things of going before the Lord, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. These times are to deepen our relationship with the Lord, you know? So Jesus talked about um, how the word is sown, and um, he gave four different examples and he mentioned the one that has no root in themselves. And so they endure but for a time. But then when, you know, different things happen and occur because of the sake of the word, because their roots were not deep, they didn't last. And so this, this time is a time of strengthening our roots and deepening our roots and our faith. And um, I would say even reconnecting um, our branches to the... Um, I would say more to the Jewish roots of our Christianity. How many of you know, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not saying this to be offensive to anyone out there, okay? But how many of you know that our Bible and our, um, our Christian heritage did not come from the Pope? Okay, all right. <laughs> so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again, all right? Our Christian heritage did not come from the Pope. It came from Jesus. Okay, so I want you to understand that, all right? So why did I say that? Because over the course of time, there were things that have occurred historically that um, 
that got the church away from Jerusalem being the center of the church, okay, to where it, it began to go to Rome, you know, especially after the temple was destroyed and, you know, and the Roman occupation, all of that. So there were some things that were, uh, let's just call them tweaked, okay? And, um, and so what we're finding is that since Israel has been reformed as a nation, 1948, Jerusalem um, came back on the map for them in 1967 with the Six-Day War, okay? There has been a steady progression towards um, building our Christian lives and heritage based on the way that Jesus taught it and the way that things were instituted back in what we read in the Gospels and what we read in the, you know, in the New Testament and so forth, Old Testament as well. So I, I said all of that not to really get into all of that, but just to uh, create a little bit of awareness that you know, God is taking us to a certain place. And, um, and it's, again, it's, and I emphasize this this past uh, Sunday over and over again, that these things that we're talking about is not just some Old Testament thing, Old Testament mindset or philosophy or doctrine or whatever the case is. The more you grow, the more you read, the more you understand, you understand that these are the ways that God operates, his seasons, his times. As I've expressed to you, birthdays, anniversaries, and so forth, these are days that are special to us, where these high holy days are days that are special to God. And, and he's established things from the very beginning to, um, to work his plan for man and creation through all of these things. And so progressively, uh, historically, um, more has been revealed and there are still, as I mentioned, uh, things to come. So we've been going through these things and, uh, you know, and the deeper you get into the understanding of it, the more you see, okay, what God is, you know, really doing. So we're coming upon Tabernacles. It will begin on this Friday sunset um, and it will last until sunset of October 6th. So it's, a, it's an eight-day feast, all right? So this one is kind of like the, the, the icing or the, the cherry on the Sunday. all right? This is the time of celebration. Man, we've just come out of Yom Kippur, the 10 days of awe, blasting the trumpets. Lord, forgive me. You know, Lord, help me. Lord, all of those things, you know, pouring our hearts out. Lord, uh, you know, decreeing God's righteous judgments, you know, uh, uh, you know, allowing him to work and, uh, and to show us things in our own selves, uh, to work on our loved ones, those that don't know Jesus. All of those things. We've been before the Lord, you know, snot, booger and tears and all of those things. OK, you know, just laying it out. OK, being real, being straight. And so. Now we come to a time where we're shifting a little bit. I'll say a lot. Uh, we're shifting now, going from that type of mindset, which we always should be still, you know, living a uh, righteous, holy life before the Lord. Um, now we're going into the time of celebrating the Lord, okay? Celebrating the covenant. And so we're talking about tabernacles. And um, so it's good that I have the opportunity to relay some things before Tabernacles begins so that when it does hit on Friday evening, then you're already hitting the ground and rolling. You know what I'm saying? And so a few things, let's go through a few things uh, scripture wise and just pointing out some of the things that uh, that is represented in Tabernacles. As I mentioned on Sunday and understanding Yom Kippur, it's really, you could say, all of the feasts. Um, to know what they're really about, you have to understand what God has done what he is doing and what also prophetically, what are the implications of this, all right? So uh, Tabernacles is no different. So Tabernacles, as I mentioned, is eight days, eight days beginning this year on September 29th at sunset, and, uh, and it ends on October 6th sunset. So um, eight days represents uh, new beginnings, okay? And it's um, going beyond completion into eternity, all right? That's what this day symbol or this feast symbolizes, okay? 
So it's eight days, beginning, as I mentioned, September 29th, ends on October 6th, sunset to sunset. And eight, of course, represents new beginnings in the Bible. We talked about uh, the, the numerology as far as the, uh, the Hebrew alphabet and the, the symbolism and the numbers and the pictograms and what the values that they all carry. But eight represents new beginnings. And it also, in this case, represents going beyond completion. Completion is seven. Uh, going beyond completion into eternity. And as we talked about on Sunday uh, uh, with the Lord, one principle is a thousand years is as a day. And so as we go into uh, the seven, seventh day or the 7,000 year period, which is the millennial reign, marks the millennial reign of Jesus, after that, okay, after that is where we go into eternity, all right? And this is at um, what Tabernacles is going to be representing. And we're going to review some things and looking at that in a little bit. Uh, this is the one feast, as I mentioned, where the emphasis is celebration, which is a stark contrast to Yom Kippur. Okay? Not really celebrating that much on Yom Kippur. Not celebrating your sins and your wrongdoings or whatever you're going before the Lord about, no. But now, after we've come through that, and you've poured out unto the Lord, he's dealt with you, the judgments are said, all of those good things, okay? And favorable judgments, I might add, on our behalf because of us going before the Lord like that. So um, it represents a time to gather in all people for the celebration of the covenant between the Lord and us, okay? Just like a bride and a groom, all right? It's a time to celebrate everything that our high priest has done for us. And we talked about those things on, uh, on this past Sunday, the hidden day, what Jesus did for us, presented his blood in the Holy of Holies, so forth. So it represents everything that our high priest has done for us. And it is a time to remember, okay? We're celebrating, we're remembering what God has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. So again, this is what the feasts are about. It's what God has done, how he has worked through those, those events in times past. Okay, so you, be, you can begin to learn his patterns, understand his methodology and his times and his, his seasons as to why he does and when he does certain things, okay? As I mentioned to you, God does not just randomly do things, okay? He's not a random God. He's on purpose and he's on point and he's always on cue, all right? And so it's a, about remembering what he has done, what he's doing right now, and what is yet to come still. God called his shot in the beginning. Genesis, we talked about the Moedim in Genesis 1.14, where God established the, the things in the heavens so that we could understand and discern the times. Okay, but he already set the times, but he just placed those things there so that we could understand when they are. Okay. And so in um, Isaiah chapter 46, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 through 10, out of the King James, is where I'm going to read it from. You can turn there really quick. Isaiah 46, verses 9 through 10. You there yet? I heard one person. <laughs> Are you speaking for everyone? <laughs> she said, if I have to, if I have to do it all by myself, Lord. <laughs> all right. It says, Isaiah 46, verse 9 through 10, it says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. Some people need to get that. He says, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. All right? So we see here God called his shot, he, and that's how he operates, from the beginning. And he declared the end, and because he's outside of time, which I won't get into all of the, uh, you know, all of that, but he set in motion the times and the seasons. And then he put the stars, he put the moon and the sun in the sky so that we would be able to understand those cycles and those timings and of all of those things, okay? 
but God established those things and he still operates off of these things. So again, I've, I've placed such emphasis on that this is not an Old Testament thing. This is a God thing. Amen. All right. So let's go back and let's look at we've been looking at Leviticus chapter 23 on understanding uh, the feast of the Lord. And so, of course, um, tabernacles or Sukkot, as is mentioned, or uh, or the um, feast of tents, uh, all of it are, are names that describe it. Um, so in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 39 through 44, he lays out in this portion of the chapter uh, the uh, instructions or details about um, tabernacles. This is one of the places mentioned that is mentioned. It says in uh, verse, um, well, it's in 39 through 44. I don't know if I want to read all of that. We'll, we'll look through it really quick. All right, it says in uh, verse 39, also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath. So it's a total of eight days. And on the eighth day shall uh, be a Sabbath. That's where he clarifies it there. And you shall uh, take you on the first day bows of goodly uh, trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You shall do what before the Lord your God? Rejoice. rejoice. Okay, so we see here there's a big difference in this one and what we are to do. So this is, have you ever been to a, a party that lasted all night? <laughs> have you ever been to one that lasted two days? Three days? Four days? Five days? Six days? Seven days? Okay, if you've been at a party like that, all right, <laughs> thank God that you are a new man, right? <laughs> all right, so he's telling us here that this is such a joyous occasion, a celebration that should take place from day one to day eight. And this is what Tabernacles is all about. It's a celebration, okay? If we are... Digging in, and I mean, you guys know where God has brought you from, okay? You know. Nobody else may know. There, there are some things that they may have found out, but guess what? They didn't find out everything. Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They didn't find out everything. And, and that's between you and the Lord, and he said, you guess, guess what? I ain't going to bring it up. So guess what? So this is, we celebrate not just those things that God has delivered us from personally, but collectively, when we look at everything that God has done for us through Jesus Christ, and, and the more you meditate on that and you understand that and you just rejoice and you reflect on the things that God does for us every day, that he provides for us, heals us, delivers us, sets us free from bondages, from wrong mindsets, from you know poverty, from lack, from you know, all so many different things that he's redeemed us from. All right. So he's saying celebrate because who is it that we are celebrating? We are celebrating the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so he says all during this time, you're not going before the Lord remorseful. You're not going before him, you know, shame. He says this is a time of rejoicing. In fact, I woke up this morning with a song that I hadn't heard in years. You know, um, uh, you know, you guys know how Dr. Ella loves music. And so all these Hosanna Integrity uh, songs she used to play all the time, all the time. And, you know, I was telling Israel this morning on the way to uh, school, I said, you know, these songs are so different than a lot of the songs that are today because they were just, you know, pretty much singing the scriptures. It wasn't all this other stuff that I hear in some of the music now. Some of it's good, but some of it's like, meh, you know. And so um, these songs, you know, they, they were singing the word of God. You know, and, and so whether you knew the scripture exactly or not, when you heard that song, you were actually learning the verses, learning the Psalms, all of those different things. And so, you know, and so this one about rejoice and be strong, banish fear and doubt because the Lord 
Um, the promise of your God is to bless you coming in and bless you going out. And, you know, and the song is really simple, but it's scriptures. And so this time is about rejoicing. So prepare yourselves for rejoicing. When the sun goes down, you're looking, you're looking, it's down. Guess what? The party horns come out, all right? <laughs> because you're beginning to celebrate everything that God has done for you and the things that you are expecting that he's going to do for you. This is a year of open doors. Amen? Amen. So he goes on and he lists all of the things here that they are to do in all their generations, and, and he gives the specific times and all of those things. And then over in... Um, uh, Numbers chapter 29, he also provides more instructions about it. And uh, verses 12 through 39, I'm not going to read all of that. But then he begins to talk about the offerings that were offered each day, starting with 13 down to 12 to 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Represented the 70 nations of the earth. So the offerings were for the 70 nations of the earth that were at that time. And um, at that time, of course. And, and so they offered these offerings based on those instructions. And also, you know, I won't get into some of the other stuff, but this is what they were offered. And so um, these were all instructions that they followed during those days. And then, of course, on the last day, um, they offered for them, for their, their, the nation of Israel. So um, all of this took place uh, during tabernacles. And again, as with the other feasts, the Lord says, these are my feasts. OK, and these are are forever convocations. These are forever things that we will be doing. OK, and this is why I say this is not an Old Testament thing. We are going to be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. OK, all during the millennial reign of Jesus. You guys understand that? So this is not something that passed away with, you know, the Old Testament or anything like that. These are God's high holy days. All right. <clears throat> So let's see here. Um, one thing that I do want to emphasize tonight is discerning uh, the time of visitation. And so um, Jesus made mention of this in uh, the book of Luke chapter 19. Let's start out in, um, let's turn over to Luke chapter 19 and let's start out with uh, verse, um, let's see, 35. What we're about to read was a praise and a celebration that mirrored the type of praise and celebration that takes place in tabernacles. In Luke 19, starting at verse 35, this is what we call Palm Sunday, okay? So in uh, verse 35, so I want you to, to look at, as we begin to read this, look at how they were celebrating Jesus as he was entering into Jerusalem, okay? The, the manner in which they celebrated him is the manner in which we should be going before the Lord during this time of tabernacles, okay? And, and so we're gonna look at what they did and also something of what Jesus said. So beginning in verse 35, and it says, and they brought him to Jesus, and this is talking about the cult, okay? The him being the cult. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. As you heard me say Sunday, um, he's riding, he won't be riding on a donkey next time, <laughs> all right? So he's riding in on a, on a colt, on a donkey, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, which is where when he comes back on the white horse, all right, and he puts his foot on the earth, all right? This is where he's gonna set his foot at, all right? On the Mount of Olives. And so it says, he's coming down the Mount of Olives on a colt, and the whole multitude of the disciples begin to rejoice, okay? And praise God with a very quiet and meek voice because the Lord knows my heart, okay? No, 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 no. It says, <laughs> It says, they begin to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Okay? 
See, this is a, a praise and a, such a ruckus uh, noise and crowd that is going on that, that mirrors what should be going on during tabernacles, okay? When the king is coming. And so it says, they rejoice, they praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, blessed be the king, capital K, that cometh in the name of the Lord, capital L, <laughs> all right? Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from the, among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke your disciples. And he said unto them, look at what Jesus said. I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones, okay? Or well, as I like it in one translation, it says the rocks, <laughs> All right. <laughs> the rocks would immediately cry out. All right. And so Jesus is telling them, he said, hey, if they don't cry out, guess what? Everything that has breath will praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> this is what he's saying here. All right. He says, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, all right, that the stones would immediately cry out. You know, they should have been joining in themselves, but you know that they weren't. All right. And so then it says in verse 41, all right? So again, this is the type of celebration that we should be carrying on. So uh, you see here that Jesus is looking for, expecting a quiet or a loud celebration. Okay, rejoicing, which means rejoying, which means restrengthening yourself, okay? Because they were thinking about all of the goodness of God, everything that Jesus had done for them, all of the miracles that they had seen, all of the stuff that God had delivered them from, their family members and seeing other people in the towns and so forth that God had done for them. And so they're rejoicing based on all of those things. They drew strength from that. That's what we do when we rejoice. We rejoice. We are, we're drawing strength from the goodness of God and everything that he has done for us. All right? And as we do that... He helps us with what we're dealing with presently because we rejoice or we re-strengthen based on that joy is synonymous with strength. This is what you have to understand. It's not just uh, the happy feeling that we have from happiness and so forth. Joy and happiness aren't the same thing, okay? So joy, the Bible says in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your what? Your strength, okay? So... They're carrying on. They're making sucker, such a ruckus that the Pharisees are like, it's too loud out here. Right? You know how some people come in, it's too loud in here. Does it, why, is it so, why is the music so loud? <laughs> All right, you know, let me go back to my church where it was so quiet and, and you know, this, the, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. All right, that's where I want to go to church. It's quiet. No. He says, we're making such a ruckus because we know what the Lord has done. All right. And so verse 41, it says, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hadst known, even thou at the least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. If you would only really understand what I have for you and what really belongs to you. Okay. There's so much more that I want to share with you. So much more that I want to do. He says, But now they are hid from thine eyes, for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies, so now he's, he's prophesying here, shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. So we see here, they did not discern properly the time of their visitation. You know, and we all know what happened through the, the, the crucifixion of Jesus, the death, the arrest, the crucifixion and, and death and burial of him, and the resurrection, of course. And so they did not discern the, the time of their visitation. And this is what one of the things that um, 
I think the Lord wanted to emphasize even right now as we're going into this last of the fall feasts, making sure that we are properly discerning this time that is before us. And so as we've come through Rosh Hashanah, as we've come through Yom Kippur, and uh, some of us have, some of us have not as much. I'm not talking about necessarily you in here, but I can tell even like on Sunday when I was sharing some things, some people were just looking at me like, um, okay, you know? And so I can tell, and it wasn't that, you know, it was a, 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 like, I don't want to hear this. It wasn't that type of attitude. It was just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it in, but it's still kind of new to me, you know? So I want us to make sure that we're understanding the, the time that is before us. Because, you know, once upon a time, I did not understand it. I didn't discern it properly, you know? And so thank God for knowledge, for understanding of his word, you know, and that you grow. And so... Jesus said they were missing out. There was so much more, but they could not, their eyes were blinded to it, and they did not see what time it really was and who was, you know, what could really be benefiting them. And so I want us to make sure that we're understanding as we're approaching this last uh, feast what time it is. These times are very unique and special because of the doors that are open just by these feasts themselves. This is why Jesus did so many things. This is why even when he uh, was baptized, it says heaven was open. And, you know, so these are times where you're going to hear from God clearer and better if you put yourself in position for the Lord. These are times where God will speak to you even in a greater way, where, where, where purpose and destiny can be set, where, as we talked about, judgments are set. So many things are taking place. So many, the, the angels are ascending and descending. There, there's a flow of the angels that is working during these times that, that is unlike other times because these are set and appointed times, okay? And so we have to properly discern and understand these things so that we are honoring the Lord during these times because, you know, at once upon a time, not understanding and knowing these things you know, it wasn't anything that I regarded or we regarded. And so there was a lack of honor before the Lord during these specific times. Okay, we honored the Lord with our lives. So it didn't mean we were just, you know, sinning or stuff like that. But we did not know. You know, it was the understanding that these are the feasts of the Jews, not the feasts of the Lord. And there's a big difference in just changing that one word in that statement. There's a big difference. And so taking out Jew and put the Lord there, it's a big difference in how you understand it, approach it, and honor God with it, okay? And so Jesus said, you did not discern your time, what was before you, and so you missed out. And even nowadays in, in, in the church as a whole, not saying necessarily this church, but sometimes there are facets of it where there is lukewarmness, Okay? And where does lukewarmness come from? Jesus warned one of the, uh, uh, the churches we call Laodicea. He called Laodicea. And this church had a lot of things going on. And, and what happened oftentimes is because they had so many other sources that they depended on, that they did not depend fully on the Lord. And this is what happens oftentimes, you know, in the church. Because we are modernized Christians, we have so much technology. We have, you know, uh, uh, good educations, good paying jobs, uh, good government jobs, at least for right now some, and, you know. And so there are a lot of things that go on that sometimes we, we get to a certain place of that I've arrived and entitlement that we become lukewarm, cold, complacent concerning the things of God. Do you understand? And so... Jesus said they didn't discern the, the time, what was before them. And so we want to make sure that we are not like that and that we are properly discerning the times. And so we have so much information available right now. 
and so many things that we've been covering that, uh, that you can read and so many resources that, that rightly divide the word of truth concerning these things so that it's not a thing of legalism or bondage and so forth, but there's so many things that, that can benefit and help us to continue to grow in these things. So Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, he discerned, properly discerned a visitation that was taking place. We can turn there really quick, just uh, another example of the importance of discerning visitations, okay? Or times when God is doing something. Genesis chapter 18, verse two. All right, well, let's just start at verse one since we're here. It's at the beginning of the chapter. May as well read verse one if we're gonna read two. All right, it says this in verse one, and the Lord appeared unto him, him being um, Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of, in the tent door in the heat of the day. All right, you ever seen somebody sitting on the on the porch with a fan because it's it's hot, you know? So <laughs> he's sitting there <laughs> in the heat of the day, and it says he did lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. <laughs> And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. He discerned these were no ordinary men here, all right? And so we see here there was a discernment that took place where when these three men came that he understood that these were not just, you know, some travelers that were coming through, all right? He understood what was before him, who was before him. As a result of this, uh, they begin to give him a word, um, and we pick up in verse 10, and, um, and they talk to him uh, about, you know, everything that God was, was doing or about to do, and he says, um, verse 10, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son, and Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him, you know, and then, of course, she began to laugh and all of that kind of stuff, okay? So, he discerned properly. It enabled him to properly hear uh, what the Lord was bringing to him. And as a result of this, of course, this was one of the things that God communicated to him about uh, having a son, uh, Isaac, who was the son of promise and so forth. And so Abraham properly discerned. Sarah laughed. OK, she didn't exactly discern like Abraham did. OK, she laughed because the, the proof that she didn't discern properly is that she laughed, okay? All right, and so um, he discerned who was there, and, you know, we see the results as to what happened. So it is important to understand, you know, I remember uh, reading about Jacob, and he, um, the place of where um, he went to sleep on a rock, and then he saw the angels descending and, uh, ascending and descending, and he said, the, the, this is uh, the house of the Lord, and I didn't even realize it, okay? So there are things that go on around us sometimes based on our sensitivity to the things of the Spirit of God will determine if we recognize them or whether we dismiss them or whether we're just oblivious to them. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, sometimes there are things that can occur in the service or sometimes we can just be so, you know, um, um, dull to certain things that we won't. Uh, have the, the respect or the honor. You know, like I can give you an example of, of, of such a, a time in the service. Say when there is altar call. And, you know, during this time, it seems that sometimes because, uh, you know, sometimes it seems that people just want to get up and they just want to walk out and go to the bathroom during that time. Like this, this is not an important time in the service. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we can have insensitivity to the things of God and, and we can miss out on blessings our own selves or somebody you could call somebody else because you're getting up that could disturb somebody else that needs something from the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to grow in our levels of sensitivity and expectation as to what God uh, wants to do. So we don't want to um, be like what Jesus said. They, they didn't discern their time and they missed out on what God really had for them. All right. So let's move on to some things talking about the future in uh, Tabernacle. So we have, you know, this Sunday and next Wednesday to continue to talk about Tabernacles and celebrate it. Um, let's go into some of the things that uh, lays out 
some of the things for the future about tabernacles. Um, let's go over to Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. And we're going to read a few verses from this book in the Old Testament, but it is speaking of some prophetic things that have yet to occur. So I, I made mention on Sunday in uh, Revelation chapter 20 um, how the enemy was thrown into the, uh, the, the bottomless pit and so forth. He was chained, bound, so forth, and cast into the bottomless pit, as it mentions in the first few verses of uh, Revelation chapter 20. And um, then in, in the process of that, it mentions the millennial reign or the thousand years that Satan would be bound, okay, cast into the bottomless pit. That thousand years also is a period where Jesus will uh, reign and rule on earth. As it said back in chapter 19, he's coming to rule with a rod of iron, all right? So he's going to, uh, for everybody that did not get burned up, okay, at his arrival, uh, that were gathered, you know, so forth. Everybody that um, that that is still existing in the of the nations of the earth, he's going to reign and rule during that thousand year period. And guess who else is going to be reigning and ruling with him? Okay, us. All right, you know what I'm saying. So we are those kings and priests that will be reigning and ruling with him. All right, so. Get your stuff together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get your stuff together. So um, in um, Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 through 19. Now, I don't want to be one that, you know, that the Lord said, you know what? You just goofed off half of the time while you were here on the earth. You know what? I can't appoint you over anything but to set to be under somebody else while you're still learning. <laughs> you know? I, you know, I want to have, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I want to have lived a life in such a way that the Lord says, OK, you've been faithful over this, all of this stuff. Now I want to make you ruler over much. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, that's that's me. You know, I don't know about you, but that's me. So um, so I still have a lot of work to do myself. You know, so Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 through 19, it says this. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left, OK, of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. All right. So that's what I was just referring to. Uh, everyone that's left. So that means everybody's not going to be there. Um, OK, think about that. Um, these and I don't know if you've really thought about this. Some of these people that aren't going to be left are going to be people that we know right now. You ever thought about that? Some of these people that aren't going to be left are going to be some people that we may know now. And some of the people that will be left may be some people that we do know now and some that have not, you know, been born as well. OK. So just food for thought. So, when, you know, we are at that point. This is what I want you to understand. We are at that point where this is not just something that's way off in the future, like when this was originally written. All right. We are so close, so close. OK, think about all the people that you go to work with. Think about those in your neighborhood. Think about the, 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 the kids that you see catching the bus in the morning. OK. Think about, uh, you know, everybody that is everybody right now. Okay? We are that close because of when things begin to take place. One, a marker, a mile marker was when Jerusalem, I mean, Israel became a nation. Jerusalem became, you know, back a part of them. And all of the other things that we see, the red heifers, all of this, the plans to build the, the third temple, um, the priests that are being trained, all of those things are markers to let us know where we are, how close we are to it. OK, so think about that. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem 
shall even go up from year to year, okay, to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So again, this is an Old Testament stuff. This book is in the Old Testament, but it's letting us know what's happening after our time that we're in right now. We haven't gotten to the millennial reign yet, okay? But he's talking about something that will take place during that time. So we're talking about a thousand years, and he says every year, every year, all the nations that are left, everybody that exists and that will exist during that time is going to go before the Lord once a year. See, this is one of the, the pilgrimage feasts that you go to Jerusalem. All right. So all the nations are going to be representing there. OK. And he says from year to year to worship the king again, a time of rejoicing. OK. Worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And look here, look here what it says here. And it shall be, it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth, those who are not discerning the time. Hard-hearted, whatever the case is, okay, that are not going um, of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So we see here. So he's, again, year to year, all the nations are to come before the Lord, worshiping him, okay? Presenting an offering, okay? Presenting unto him. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's ruling with a rod of iron. He's not Mary's little lamb, okay? All right? He's, come, he's the king, okay? We are reigning and ruling with him during this time. And so he's saying all of the families of the earth, all of the nations, they are to come before the Lord year by year over that thousand year period. And the ones that do, guess what? You're going to see the evidence of that by rain, okay? Prosperity, okay? Continual blessings and so forth. But the ones that do not, guess what? They become cursed. No rain. And you're going to see that. Okay? It wouldn't be there if it wouldn't happen. Okay? And so even in this, just imagine this. Even in this, after having seen all of the other people in the nation that did not make it, yet you're still going to have some whose hearts are going to be so hard that they're not going to come before the Lord as they should. They're going to have all kinds of excuses. Just like, think about this, Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he was there for some, what, was it 40 days? 40 days teaching, sharing with them, you know, all kinds of things. Even the Apostle Paul wrote about there were some 500 plus that Jesus had revealed himself to, told them to wait in Jerusalem. Yet we read about in Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, that it was only 120 that were in that upper room where he told them to go and wait. So we see, even in the midst of Jesus, I mean, if they don't listen to Jesus directly like that during that time, and during when he sets foot on the earth, splits the Mount of Olives, you know, all, you know I mean, if all of that takes place and people still heart to heart, guess what? This is why you shouldn't get discouraged when you say something to somebody and they, you know, they have their mind or their way about it. All right. If they do that to Jesus, I mean, you're in good company. OK, that's the way you have to look at it. So we see here that during a thousand year millennial reign, they still Jesus still required men, women, boys and girls to come before him. So we see here again. Again, this is not the feast of the Jews. This is the feast of the Lord. All right. So God has done things through this. He is doing and he will do things through this because these are his times and seasons. All right. These are how he operates and he's fulfilling his plan. All right. 
So let's turn over to Revelation chapter 21. So here is the future end game, the ultimate ending. It says this in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Because who's in that city? Who's in that city? <laughs> we are. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither will there shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. All right. So this is the forever dwelling of the Lord God God the Father with all of us. This is the end game. Forever tabernacling with men. This is, this is what God is doing here. And so this is the end game. And so we see here out through all of these feasts, which mark um, uh, creation, which mark the, the days of creation, mark the times of creation and the years of man on the earth. Um, these feast days. Um, and all of those things are to lead us to this point of where God has um, done, he's, he's done away with the enemy. He's gotten um, all of the unrighteous they have been dealt with. The wicked has been dealt with. God has created a new heaven and a new earth. And now God is tabernacling with men. And then we see who is not a part of this. Verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right? And so a um, lot of things in here, um, and you can go on and read uh, the rest of uh, chapter uh, 21, and it talks about all of these things. Um, but these are things to come, but this is what Tabernacles is really all about. It is, as it was mentioned in the Gospels, Emmanuel, God with us. And so here is the ultimate God with us. And, um, and so uh, everything that we are doing, especially during these feast times, is leading up to this point. And so this is why I've placed such strong emphasis on understanding the importance of recognizing these days and these times and that these are the feasts of the Lord and not just the feasts of the Jews. He, they are the firstborn, okay, that God relayed all of these things to. They are the root that the tree has blossomed from. And we are the branches on that tree. You guys understand we are part of that. And so, um, so continue to, um, you know, Reflect on the things that we've been talking about as we approach uh, Sukkot on this Friday evening. We don't have a special service reserved for this Friday, um, at least as of right now. <laughs> but uh, we don't have a special service reserved for that. But um, but also, but make sure you 
um, uh, uh, have some reservations in your heart about it. So um, we'll probably, if we don't have anything, we'll send out some scriptures, some things as reminders, some things to, uh, you know, I pointed to you towards some things here tonight, but there are some other things that um, also are things that you can be pointed towards in this day to uh, uh, carefully observe it and to celebrate it. Remember, this is not a time of mourning, okay? All the nations of the earth come before the Lord during this time. It's a gathering of the people of the nations of the earth, and he's looking to see who honors. And you heard Apostle Talks um, this Sunday. Was it Sunday? No, Monday. Monday night, as we came here closing out Yom Kippur, about the rain, the rain that he saw. All right? What did we just read about in Zechariah? About the rain that is promised when we honor the Lord during this time. Okay? So uh, think about those things. Allow the Lord to continue to speak to your heart about those things, and you will be the more blessed. Amen. Amen. So God bless all of you. Those of you that have been watching us tonight through live stream, uh, I pray that you've taken in the word in your heart that you've heard tonight. Uh, continue to chew on it, meditate on it, and allow the Holy Spirit to uh, further explain and expound on these things to your life so that you will not be like those that Jesus spoke of that did not discern the hour of visitation, this special time that, excuse me, that is being presented right now. So as we are on Wednesday night, you have less than 48 hours to meditate and to prepare yourselves for Sukkot, for the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and as you heard me mention, and as we read in the scriptures, this is a time of rejoicing because of the covenant that God has cut with us. So celebrate the Lord during this time and watch him bless you. As, as we say sometimes, bless your socks off. All right, watch him bless you and pour out his rain on your life. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a blessed week.